Hi, I'm Peyton. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my favorite author, Wendy Mass. I was trying to figure out what kind of video I wanted to do, and I have so many books by Wendy Mass, and I love so many of them. So I just wanted to dedicate a whole video to all of the different books by her that I love so much. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Wendy Mass is a middle grade author, so a lot of these books I read when I was younger. She is the author that sort of got me into reading so much. I got one of her books and it was part of a series and I loved it so much. So I bought more of the books in that series and I kept reading more and more of her books and every week my parents would buy me a different book and she really started my love of reading. The first books that I'm going to talk about is the Willow Fall series. There are actually five books in the series but I only have four. Just recently found out that there was a fifth one and I didn't know that it came out so maybe I can get that one soon but I have the first four to talk about. So the Willow Fall series follows a bunch of kids who live in Willow Falls and each book has a different main character in that group of friends and what I like about the series is that it doesn't really matter if you read them in order or not. I got 13 gifts first and it's actually the third book in the series and it was perfectly fine. I wasn't confused at all so if you want to get these or you want to try it, you don't have to read the whole series, you can just read one. The first book in the series is 11 Birthdays. So our main character, Amanda, is about to turn 11 and she's really not looking forward to the day because her and her former best friend, Leo, have spent every birthday together since they were born and she really is not looking forward to the day. They're having separate birthday parties and she just wants the day to be over. So after her birthday party is over and she goes to bed, she wakes up to realize that it is her birthday all over again. So she has to sort of get out of this Groundhog Day situation and try to just make her birthday end once and for all. I love the theme of having the same day happen over and over again and I think that it was such a funny story. It's just sort of a fun story but their whole backstory and like why they had falling out and why that happened, it was interesting to me and I really really like the characters but I would totally recommend this book. So the next book in the series is Finally, and I'm not actually positive if this is called 12 Finally or just Finally, but we're just gonna call it Finally. But this is a story of Rory, and she's about to turn 12, and she's really excited because for her entire life, she has constantly asked her parents if she could do things like wear makeup and get contacts, and they always say when you're 12, like when you're 12, you can do it. And so she has this huge list of things that her parents said that she could do when she was 12, and she's so excited to do them. But once the day comes, she starts doing all these things, they end up not turning out how she wants them to turn out. I think this is such a funny story. I love, like, everything you can possibly think of goes wrong. Like, for example, one of them I remember is she gets contact lenses and she scratches her eye when she gets them. So she has, like, a swollen eye and she can't see out of it and it's just like funny things like that happen and it's just like over and over and over again they never turn out how she thinks they're going to. So I think it's such a hilarious story and it's such an easy read so I would totally recommend this one also. So the next book in the series is 13 Gifts. Tara has gotten into a little bit of trouble at school so her parents decide that instead of taking her on the summer trip that they were going to go on, they're going to send her to Willow Falls to live with her aunt her uncle and her bratty little cousin, Emily. Once she gets there, she learns some secrets about the town and some things that she can't really explain end up happening to her. I absolutely love this book so much. The whole series of Willow Falls sort of has these like magical things happen that like no one can really explain. And this one I think has the most interesting story and I just really, really loved it. So the fourth book in the series and the last book that I own in the series is The Last Present. So in this book, Amanda and Leo, who are the main characters from the first book, have not spoken again for a year. But when their best friend's little sister Grace ends up falling into a coma, they have to work with Angela D'Angelo, who is the woman behind all the magical phenomenons that happen in the town, and travel back in time and try to figure out how to save her. I think this book is so good. I think that even though it seems like it's kind of like dark, like she's in a coma, it's like, I mean, it's not like sad like that. I think it's really like a fast paced book. I think it's really, really interesting. I love, I just love all the like magical things that happen in all of these books. I think that they're so cool. So I really enjoyed this. The next book that I have by Wendy Mass and one of my favorite books of all time is The Candy Makers. The Candy Makers is the story of four kids and they're competing in a national candy making competition and there's just mystery and like surprises and like scheming. There's not much that I can say about this book without ruining it, but I will say that my favorite part about this book is there are four kids and there's four different sections where you get to hear the whole story over 
and their perspective. And while that sounds like it would be boring and it would be like, oh, I'm reading the same story like four times, it's not. I can promise you that. And it's such an amazing book. So totally 100% recommend this one. The next book that I have is the sequel to The Candy Makers, which is The Candy Makers and The Great Chocolate Chase. And I'm not gonna lie, I haven't read this one yet. I haven't gotten around to it yet, but I'm really, really excited to read it. I do know that the story is that the winning candy from the first book is going to be produced and sold by the factory. And once it comes down the conveyor belt, they realize that something's a little bit wrong. And so the four kids have to come back together and try and figure out what happened. So the next book is Jeremy Fink and the Meaning of Life. And if you have heard that title before, it's also a movie. I haven't seen it yet, but I recently found out that it's also a movie by the same title. Jeremy Fink and the Meaning of Life is the story of a boy named Jeremy. And on his 13th birthday, he receives a box that has the words, the meaning of life engraved on the top of it, but it's locked. And so him and his best friend, Lizzie, have to like search the town to find the key that will unlock the box and I think it's a really really fun adventure I think it's really interesting and it does have some really really sweet moments in it so I would totally recommend this one as well the next book is every soul a star and this book is a story of three kids who end up coming together unexpectedly because of a total solar eclipse that's happening soon the first kid is Allie and she lives on a campground with her family and she loves the outdoors and she loves to go stargazing and comet hunting the second kid is is Brie. She's a future homecoming queen and she's always focused on how she looks and how she appears. The third kid is Jack and he's self-conscious and awkward and he doesn't like to go out of his comfort zone but all three of the kids are brought together and they all make unlikely friendships and I think that this is such a sweet story. I think that this book is like really sweet. It focuses on like a lot of important topics and I just really really love it. It just makes me happy every time I read it so I would totally recommend this book. The next book is Heaven Looks a Lot Like the Mall. Heaven Looks a Lot Like the Mall is a story of 16 year old Tessa and after she has a horrible accident in gym class she ends up in what she thinks is heaven and it looks a lot like her hometown mall. Tessa ends up reliving her life until that moment and she ends up finding out things about herself that she didn't know and a lot of things that she didn't really like about herself. I think that this is a really really important book and I think that it kind of makes you rethink your choices in life and make you remember why life is important and what makes life worth living. So the next book that I have is Leap Day and Leap Day is a story of Josie and today is her 16th birthday but because she was born on Leap Day it's technically her fourth birthday and you just get to see Josie go through her 16th birthday and she has a driver's test and there's a scavenger hunt and there's a Sweet 16 initiation that everyone in her town does and you get to see it from Josie's perspective and then from other people's perspectives around her. I think it's a really fun book and I really, really enjoyed it. The next book that I have is A Mango Shaped Space. This book is a story of Mia Winchell and while she appears to be a typical kid, she has a condition called synesthesia. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, very, very sorry. I googled it and it says that's how you pronounce it, so I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. But synesthesia is basically where she associates letters and numbers and words with different colors. And she has kept this secret from everyone except for her family for a really long time. But it starts to affect her schoolwork and her learning. And so she ends up having to reveal the secret that she's had to the rest of the world. I love this book so much because at the time when I read it, I had never heard of this before. And I didn't know that it was a real thing. So that it was super, super interesting to learn about it. And also, I think that the book is sort of like touching about her trying to live with this and meeting different people that have this condition that she also has and sort of just dealing with family troubles that she has. So I really, really, really love this book. So the next two books that I have are both kind of in a series by Wendy Mass where she takes old fairy tales, like princess stories, and takes a little bit of a twist on them. So the first one is Sleeping Beauty, the one who took a really long nap, and this is a story of Sleeping Beauty. What's different about the story is that the prince's mother has ogre blood in her veins, and so she tends to have violent urges every once in a while. So when the prince wakes the princess up from her sleep, he takes her home to his mom, and it's kind of like a strange situation. I think that twists on fairy tales are just really fun stories, so I would totally recommend this book. The last book that I have is Beauty and the Beast, The One Who Didn't Run Away. 
and once again this is a twist on the story of Beauty and the Beast and Beauty although she's been named a beauty she feels like she doesn't really live up to the name she loves to read and she has a hobby of picking up things that people have dropped in front of her and she doesn't really focus too much on her appearance so she doesn't feel like she fits the mold of what her name is the prince also feels like he doesn't fit the mold of what a prince should be he likes to play the bagpipes and study the stars but when the prince starts to grow fur and his nails turn their claws they cross paths and they end up having to save themselves before they can save each other. This is a really fun story because it's not quite as different as the fairy tale was. I didn't find it as interesting as I did find the Sleeping Beauty one. So I would definitely recommend the Sleeping Beauty one more than this one. But if you really love fairy tales and you love twists on fairy tales, you would really like this. So those are all the books that I own by Wendy Mass and hopefully I can buy some more in the near future. I am sorry if this whole video was just me gushing about how much I love her writing. I honestly don't know any bad things to say about most of her books. So if you don't like her books, I'm sorry. You've probably not enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts on Wendy Mass's books are and if you know any authors that I would like based on my love for Wendy Mass. Thanks for watching.